Lisa Kreider, host of Connect Hampton Roads. Today, we're going to talk about the future of public transportation, and joining us is the Vice President of WSP, Roy Keenitz. Roy, thank you so much for joining us today. Happy to be here. Great. We're excited to talk about this. Now, the transportation marketplace is changing faster than we could imagine. New types of services are cropping up everywhere. You have Uber, you have Lyft, you have the bike share program. This means the public is going to have more choices than ever before, right? Yeah, we have seen uh, a huge growth in new options, and gas is very cheap right now. And what that has meant is that patronage on traditional bus systems in all types of regions all over the country has been declining, and that's been happening here. And we looked at uh, Hampton Roads has seen about a 15% drop in usage. Your, you know, your peer regions around the country, it's been often more like 20. So, you know, it, it's, it's a problem, but it's not a problem unique to this region. Of course, here at Hampton Roads Transit, we have you know bus service in six of the cities, and then we have light rail and um, ferry service in Norfolk. But you know, is our system configured correctly? That's one of the big questions we're going to be studying as part of this project, which we kicked off uh, a few months ago, and is going to go through the through next year. Let's talk about the Transform Transformation Project. That'd be great. Tell right. us a little bit about it. So the goal really is to say is the pattern of service that is being offered right now by the agency the most efficient one that could be out there. This region has a, a somewhat unusual way of paying for transit, which is each of the jurisdictions, the six jurisdictions that participate in HRT, decides how much they want to spend, and then that's how much service is offered in that jurisdiction. And so you have these fairly uneven patterns of service that drive the overall pattern. And so we're going to look at the question of, what if we step back and said, let's just look at the users, where do they live? Where do they work? Where do folks need to go? And what would that system look like? And is that meaningfully different than what we have now? And that gives people an opportunity to say, do we want to make a big change? I think that's brilliant. Now, what are the steps for 2019 and how will this pro uh, program and project really progress? So what we started out by doing is uh, an analysis of HRT's current performance. And then the next phase is going to be what that future could look like. So on the current performance side, we've gone and looked at some financial benchmarks. And there's a, some good news and some not so good news there. The good news is HRT is a very efficient provider of service. We measure what does it cost you to put one bus on the, hour, on the road for one hour. And HRT's costs are the lowest among the group of 10 agencies that we looked at that are all these sort of medium-sized metro areas. Wow. So that's great. But the next question is, all right, well, how many hours of service are you putting out on the road? HRT is very high in that measure. So the unit cost is low, but the number of units, given how many people are riding, that's very high. And so you end up having a cost performance that's sort of right in the middle, but you get there by a somewhat unusual path. And it's a little bit of a clue that what's happened is that over time, a series of small decisions have been made, which have led to a lot of service being offered in places and at times where the ridership yield is very low and that costs something and so then there are not funds necessary to offer as much service at the times of day or in the places where you might generate much more ridership. Well that makes a lot of sense. Now have you seen other regions do similar projects and have you gotten to help out with some of the other projects across the country? We've been involved in, in Baltimore and Houston and in some other regions that have recently done big redesigns of their bus system. In, in Houston, for example, they had a very traditional, all the buses came downtown, people would transfer, get on the next ride, and then go to wherever they were going. And what that meant is for people whose destination is not in the core, it might be a suburb to suburb commute, it's a very inefficient system. So they've restructured to have much more of a grid pattern so folks don't need to go downtown if that's not their destination. And that's led to increasing ridership in that metro area while their peer regions have seen some decreases. Uh, Baltimore did a somewhat similar plan. Here, the geography of this region is just very different. Houston is big and wide and flat and has a grid pattern streets. Here, that's just not what we see. We've got, there's water everywhere, there's bridges, there's tunnels, there's tolls. So the design here has to be really built around the geography. I think that's absolutely true. Well, Roy, this has been really interesting. Thank you so much for your time. Everybody, we want you to learn more about this project. Visit transformtransit.com. There's even a survey there for you to weigh in. We'd love to hear your feedback and for you to follow us and get involved. Thank you very much, and until next time.